Hey guys, welcome back for another fun-filled adventure um, of walnuts and wine berries. So, last time I left you, we tested out, we got the water up here. We proved our concept and we can get water up here. Good, because I'm gonna need some. We're gonna lay this block. This block is gonna be mortared together. And uh, I'll tell you about that, how much I got and all this stuff and what it's for. But, um, but anyway, uh, today I'm just gathering. I got the concrete mixer up here, a couple other things, and I gotta bring up a tote so that I could pump some water into the tote so that we have some water to mix for our mortar. Um, so let me show you what I got. I ordered three and a half pallets. This is not a pallet. I think a pallet is, what, four, three, seven courses or so? Something like that? Yeah. Um, there's a hundred and five blocks that come on a pallet. I had to break them up because my track loader, the skid steer, not Ricky, the, uh, the track loader, um, it has a weight like recommendation of 1600 pounds. Um, one pallet of this is like 4,000 pounds. So I figured split it in half, um, take two trips per pallet. I ordered 350 and that came out to like three and a half pallets worth. Um, these are concrete blocks. They are for structural purposes. Ugh, they are about 38 pounds a piece. And when you order them on a big pallet like this, they come kind of mixed. If you see, these are called runners. So when you have like wings on this side and wings on this side, that's for a block that's like in the middle of the wall and you're connecting block to block to block to block. Um, you're also going to need some corners, but they're mixed into these pallets. This is a corner piece. Okay. It has a runner side and sorry for the light. And it's got a smooth side for the corner. That's where obviously the corners would come together. So we got our block and it's going over here. We're gonna clean up this whole section. I haven't touched it since I have finished the project. So we gotta get all the leaves out. We gotta take the boards off. Okay, we got a lot of little work to do. And here, well, you can't even see it, but I'll open this up soon. I got 30 bags of 90 pound mortar, 90 or 92, I don't know what it is. But anyway, I calculated it out um, and rounded up. But I got type S high strength structural mortar. This is your Portland cement and the sand and whatever else is in their recipe, but it's pretty much a add water, mix and go. So yeah, that's, that's the way to go. I am definitely developing a little kite action here and I got some holes in my tarp now. We gotta tighten up the ropes. Ooh, if it was way up there, that'd be nice. All right, but I'm just gonna leave it up there and I'm probably gonna work underneath this thing, but yeah, let's get going and let's clean out this place and get it ready for tomorrow so we can start pouring, not pouring, but uh, laying block and mortaring it down and figuring it out as I go. Never done this before, let's do it. All right. So I want to unload this stuff and then I'm going to make my way back down with the tractor and grab one of those totes and put it on here. Maybe I'll switch to the forks. Yeah, I'll probably switch to the forks. We got to take another run. <gasps> Did I say the run word? Okay, we're going to take another run. Okay, Carmen? Listen, we got to go get the tote. We got to bring it back up here and we got to turn on the water. Don't let me forget the remote control for the water. They, they don't care. Okay, let's do this. I'm in the market for some new forks. I don't want to buy it from these guys. Eh, eh. 
had a experience with them lately. I'll give you a little a little hint. I'm gonna fix this, but oh, I can't even show you. This has been like this for months now, but uh, there you go. And I'll get into this at another episode, but I'll be fixing this bucket. The weld on this thing, I got this from Titan. The weld on it was just effective. It, this, uh, this piece of steel is not hardened steel and it just broke free of the weld. I mean, I'll get into that some other time. I do plan on fixing that stump bucket soon, but the teeth ripped right off of it. Asked them to help me out, and they said no, because I was one month out of warranty, so no more business for them. Okay, so I'm in the market for some new forks. I did repair these, and these did do the task of bringing all those blocks up. Um, yeah, it's like everything Titan has broken on me. But anyway, I did want to show you. I got some new tracks. I got these from rubbertrack.com. That's the first tracks I've ordered from them, but... I have purchased the rear sprocket, or the sprocket, <laughs> and the uh, front idlers from them, and it was great. I ordered these on a Saturday, like at two o'clock in the afternoon, and they showed up from Indiana to Virginia on Monday. So I'm really happy with them, free shipping. Um, yeah, so these, the brand is Prowler, and I just don't see these on a lot of machines, but my property, I'm working with clay. This is sandstone, but there's a lot of clay. And these really, I'm gonna put them to the test now because the road is very, very sloppy, especially going up it. So let's see what we can do. We're gonna bring this tote up and then we're gonna call Meg, have her turn on the water and we're gonna fill it up so we got some water for tomorrow's block laying day. Let's get up the hill. What does it say? Organic sunflower oil totes. Hi, what? Oleic? What the hell does that mean? Okay. Non-allergen organic. Okay. It's got this. It's even got that little hardware extension uh, doohickey on the side. So we're going to... Last episode I was talking about our water containers this is them there's two of them so we're going to series the two together probably with some pvc and we're probably going to retrofit the pex line will come into the top of one of them when you series them together they will equalize and then the output on one of them one of these spouts will be connected to a exterior shallow well pump which will pressurize a pressure, a pressure tank that's gonna be in there in the root cellar. And then that will be our water solution for our house right here for the root cellar. And there's gonna be a wood boiler right around there. 
so it'll serve all of that. But for now, I just needed something to hold an abundance of water. This is about 300 gallons. That says 250. I don't know if you could read that. Um, so more likely, I don't know, 275. So we'll have upwards of 500 plus gallons of water at any given time. That's good. Okay, there's our water line. We're gonna get set and I'm gonna call Meg and we're gonna get the water flowing. I'm in the shed. You're in the shed? Tell me when you hear the valve, ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I think it's, it made a pop noise. Okay, it's back. Well, guess what? What? I have water. Awesome. That was quick. Hey, while we're here, let's do a quick gallons per minute test. All right, I got a little five gallon bucket. I'm gonna, on my phone, do a countdown. All right, as soon as the water hits the bucket, I'm going to start my countdown for one minute. Now. It's going to be close to five gallons. Okay. Dirty bucket. It is clean water, but yeah, look at that. We're right about here so we are four four and a quarter gallons a minute that's very respectable all right we're gonna let that fill up i'll keep an eye on it from in there and i'm gonna clean that up in the process We are still pumping here. It's been like uh, 20 minutes, I'd say. So that's, I'd say, about the halfway mark, maybe a little bit more. So it's pumped a hundred and something gallons already. It's still just as consistent as it was. A good deal. All right, getting kind of dark, guys. Before I Get out of here. I'll show you this turning off. We're right, gonna take our remote. I think it's in latch mode. Let's hit B. And it's off. Good deal. Okay. Now let's pop off these forms, hopefully. It's a little muddy in here because of the holes that it formed in the tarp. 
But man, if I haven't had, if I didn't put this tarp up, I would have been swimming right now. Yeah, this came off easy. Guys, I'm telling you, you don't have to, you don't have to oil up your forms. Don't do that. Look at that. No oil. All right, looks pretty good. I got a hairline crack here on top of the rock. I'm just being real here. I expected that. If you can excavate the rock before you pour, the shallow spots are gonna crack on you. Oh well. Now these are tricky because when I did these forms, I had to put the screw through this way from the inside of the form into the stake. And you could see it coming out here a little bit. I had to do that. There's no way to get that impact driver this way. So some spots I had to do it like that. We'll just do a little jiggle action. Hopefully it'll come loose. If not, we could shear off these stakes. There we go. See? Holy smokes. Man, those threads held on pretty good. <laughs> Amazing what leverage does. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna reuse these boards for the house footers. All right, friends, the time has come. I've been working all morning and a good part of the afternoon. Jeez, it's like, should I even start? Not much sun left. Don't you love like being a homesteader? You look at the sun, <laughs> right? Anyway, um, so here's where I'm at. I am about to lay my blocks. I got them to the 16th of an inch. This thing is perfectly square. So I put a corner block there, one in each quarter pretty much. One there, one there, and one over here. I measured the distance between them. And then I check the diagonal distance on each corner of the block and I am good to go. Those are my dimensions and this is what it's going to look like. That's the back. This is where I keep coming in. There's going to be a little lentil there. That's going to be the door. Um, these are our water containers. Here's from the other side. Okay, this is roughly the slope. So I just took some measurements and... Uh, base it off that so let's do this huh well we're level anyway guys I started this the other day yeah I started this the other day and got nowhere really I put down about 10 blocks or so if if that three six seven nine blocks maybe 
Um, so I got everything, I got all my square marks, got the chalk line down and everything. I know my footers are all square, the lines and everything. I just got to follow those and go up. It's, it's a lot easier or it's a lot easier said than done. I'll have to say that. When you see a good mason laying block, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's quite a work of art, to be honest. Um, and you really got to, you can't appreciate it unless you get in there and try to do it yourself. And that's what I'm doing right now. So after I started laying this down, um, I quickly realized that I needed a better, more amateur approach. So I watched the Perkins brothers and I'll link to their video. Um, I like those guys. I've seen a few of their videos and uh, they're good builders. And I think I would have a ball just learning a lot from them if I had an opportunity to work with them for a few days. But anyway, um, one of their videos, they had a vertical bar in each of the four corners of your footers, and they put it up plumb, both on the X and Y axis, and they, you know, they brace it off on the side so it can't move. Then that vertical bar is used as a guide for your mason lines so that you can make marks every eight inches and go up and then like you, you mark everything. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm not going to copy the way that they did it exactly. I'm going to use um, EMT or electrical metal conduit. Um, and I'm going to implement a little bit of maker pipe for the hardware and we're going to brace it all along the sides and then use a water level to get everything established. And then we'll have nice horizontal lines that we could just lay one course at a time instead of building up this corner and that corner and mason line between them. The pros do it that way and I am certainly no pro. So let's get started. I'm going to take you over here and I'll show you how I'm getting um, how I'm supporting the bottom of the poles. It'll all make sense. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the corner of uh, one of our runs. Meg and I snapped some chalk lines the other day. Um, so we know that this concrete block is going to go uh, right here. Okay? Um, now, I went ahead and made a few of these. This is a bad one. Here, here we go. I made a few of these and pre-drilled a few holes, but more importantly, I, I pre-drilled a hole that can fit three-quarter EMT. Here it is. It slips right in there with a little convincing, and it's staying put. Now, I'm going to just take some um, lag screws, like so, and I'm going to get this in the position that I need it so that this piece of conduit goes right on the corner. I'll have it all lined up and then I can use that conduit as one of my pieces of vertical bar to run my lines. Now the Perkins brothers, they use square tubing and that's probably better, but um, I didn't want to spend that much. I wanted to use just some EMT. So I'll show you what we can do with maker pipe. But anyway, that'll, you know, this connected to that one and this connected to that one will measure eight inches up in those increments and run lines. And it'll give us just a perfect, absolutely perfect level line to run our block and it eliminates some of the guesswork. All right, let's, let's get this down in the ground here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some random pieces of lumber. I had to get out of here yesterday. It snowed. Let's get some lumber. And we're going to attach some three-quarter inch EMT to it. I just, I don't know, maybe eight inches or so. I'm going to attach them right about here with a couple screws. Can you see that? Right about there. 
Okay, so my goal here is just to give myself something that I could attach a piece of maker pipe to. All right, you could just use pipes too. You know, the three quarter pipe, you could. I just thought this would be a little bit more economical for me anyway. Um, a 10 foot piece of pipe these days is like $10. So I got four of them for the corners. Then I used just some kind of spare stuff I had sitting around just to give myself something to connect this end to. And then the rest could be wood. We could cut it to size very easily and then screw the bottom into the wooden stakes that are gonna be in the ground holding it all, tying it all together. All right, there's two for one corner. Getting a little burn barrel going here, guys. And I used the battery drill, my new one, and it's so cold that the battery died very quickly. So, got a carbide bit on the old Good old dependable electric drill. So we're gonna put a few in here around. Let's do it. Three more. All right, priorities, guys, right? Maddie, Carmen, good girl. We got them nice and warm now. We're cooking, baby. Burning off the uh, paint, obviously, but didn't take very long, there's not much on there. Okay, we are roaring. Got some cedar in there and establishing some coals. And the dogs will be nice and toasty if they want to. I should have brought them up a little, some kind of blanket nearby. There we go. Now we could take, you know, junk like this. and This would be good. We can keep it nice and warm up here, take a break, warm up our hands when we want to. There's plenty of stuff laying around. Look at all that stuff over there. All over there. I can get my girls up here and uh, they can collect stuff out of the woods, maybe with like a Christmas tree saw, a little the bow saw and uh, get us some nice uh, nice with the burn in here all right we are gonna get over there in the hole set up these pipes all right there's the final setup guys this is one I got to do three others I'll show you the next one worked out the kinks on this one all right we got two adjustable angle pieces of maker pipe I'll show you how those install and how they work they come down to a three-quarter conduit, and then that's attached with screws to this stick. 
and that stick is staked into the ground and it's held on there with uh, just a little screw. Now, the challenge here is getting it plumb this direction and this direction, X and Y. I'm looking at that bubble there, and we are looking really good. Uh, I got it on wide lens. I don't know if you can see it or not, but... So, it's good that way. And when we move it over 90 degrees this way, we are good that way. See that? All right, now, this is a 10 feet... 10 foot piece of conduit. It goes all the way down to those little, well, you can't see it from here, from those little um, wooden hole things that I did the other day. So we're gonna move over to that side and do this whole setup, and then we'll finish up with corners three and four, and then um, we'll get some mason line ready to go for tomorrow. Let's stand this upright, and let's get you down there and insert this guy. get it started and then it self seats itself get this basically where it's going put the bolt through get the nut threaded a little bit right, got a little mud on it it's okay All right, that's holding the pole here. Okay, now, I, I'm twisting this thing, putting pressure on it, and it's not moving. All right, now, let's get this bolt on here, tighten everything up. Then, what I can do is just bring this guy around and adjust my pole. Let me zoom you out. So let's just line it up that way, and I got this pole here, and I'll need a stake in the ground. Once I get that stake in the ground, well, I should line this up as close to plumb as I can using my, using my level here. There we go. That is plumb. Get it as close as you can. And I like to check the other side, see if I'm in the ballpark, which I am. Because um, I'm going to have to go this way next. Put a kickstand this way. So let's get it as close as possible. Now I'll drive a stake into the ground. Just a simple stake. Line it up. We're going to fine tune everything in a minute. All right, let's start a screw. Okay, leave that there. Right. Now, just make small adjustments and drive it home. Done. Right there. Now if I go this way and push the pole, it's, it's not budging. It's not moving. Alright, let's find out where this guy's got to go. We'll put our next connector in place. All right. We're going to turn our level this direction and we're going to have to barely go like that. So just under the tape I think will be a good spot. That's the way to do it. Get the last puzzle piece around. 
Okay. Let's get this started. Orient it correctly. Now we can tighten this side mostly. Because all this does is hold it to the bar. These things can still move freely. All right, I don't want to over tighten it because I want room for that, that bar. I think I'll have the perfect amount. Okay, that's good. It's got to go this way. Around there, we'll fine tune it once I get the other hardware. Oh, did I forget the other hardware? Damn it. You need two sets of hardware for each connection. All right, that's locked in. Right there. This one needs a small adjustment, I think. Yep, needs to... No, actually... No, we're good. Okay. We are good to go guys and that is really solid good to go that way and that way we're good Right there. Awesome. Let's get some steaks. Now this just makes me happy. We got the burner going. And look at my smart dogs. You guys know where to sit, where it's warm, right? Good job, guys. Hi, Carmen. Hey, Maddie. Big stretch. We're by the fire here. You know, I, I think I'm going to cut pieces so that they fit all in there. There's a bunch of coals on the bottom. You guys are so smart. What are you doing, Maddie? Don't burn yourself, honey. Hi, Carmen. Honey, your sweater's, you know, you had to pull up your pants there, honey. Carmen, come here. Let me see. We gotta get your reindeer sweater up. Okay. See, she's got this, like, sweater, but it's too loose around the neck. Yeah. And Maddie's got her jingle bell on. She's a good girl. All right, you guys stay warm. I got a few other things to do to prepare for tomorrow. Last thing to do here, in prep for tomorrow, 
oh, is to take this water level around and get a consistent line or a consistent mark on all four poles. Doesn't matter where it is. Let's just do that real quick. And I'm going with the bottom of the bubble. And there it is. Whew. All right. It's like I'm holding my breath. Okay, there's one. Now the bucket stays there. I'm going to move this stick over the next one. And we're going to let it equalize. Make a mark. And then this mark to that mark will be absolutely perfectly level. It just, it doesn't even matter what you rest the thing on, to be honest. Because that bubble, it doesn't matter if I go here or if I go down to the ground. <sighs> this thing is rising. I don't know if you can see it from there. But it's all the way, let me see, up to about here. Now if I put it on top of this block, look, it's going to come down to the same exact point. Just because of the water line inside that bucket over there. So it really doesn't matter what you use to grab your zero point but you need to mark all four So, let me explain how to set these poles up real quick. Um, you got to find your low side. So, my footers, right? There's four corners, essentially, three and four over here. What you want to do is run around with the, with the water level, the stick right there. Okay, put that up against the pole, and then give it a mark. I went around every single pole and marked it with one of these little carrot signs here. Then... You measure from here down to the bottom of the footer and you measure that distance. This one was the shortest distance. It was like 47 and a half or something like that. Everything else was around, or no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was like 46 and a quarter. It doesn't really matter. Whatever is the shortest distance, um, you know which side is going to be your high side. So for me, my high side is here. So I took the measurement 46 and a quarter or something like that, or 46 and three quarters. And then I measured up to the next eighth increment. So 48 inches, increments of eight. At that point, that's where my string's gonna go. 48, I got 56 right here, 64, and all the way up here is 72. All the way down, I have it all the way down to eight inches. So eight inches is the top of your line. Now I could take a string from there all the way over to there and mark eight inches. So knowing that where my bubble was from my water level, I could then go over here to the level line and then set the tape measure to 46 and three quarters from here and measure up to the 48 mark and repeat the process going all the way up and down. So we got eight all the way to 48. I didn't finish the above section, so I'm gonna knock that out real quick. Did I do it over here yet? No, I only got up to 48. So I must have uh, yesterday stopped when I went from here up to 48 and then down to 8. So I'm just going to finish up these marks real quick. And we'll be able to attach our pink mason line, which I need to locate. And we'll be good to go. We'll be ready. Hey guys, check this out. I went to get my bucket. It was frozen. So I poured it out. How cool is that? Make a good cocktail party uh, centerpiece. No, oh, it's leaking. Can't do that. Oh, oh well. <sighs> that was cool. Hang in there, buddy. Goodness gracious. Look at that. How cool is that? I need more. Let's get to work. So how am I going to do this in the cold weather? Well, it's going to be 50 something today. But uh, so the next few nights I don't have 
freezing temperatures I have like 34, 36, 40, something like that. So I got a few good days to do this, but I'm going to use this thermo lube, which is a set accelerator. And you're supposed to, according to the instructions, use oh, protect concrete from freezing for a minimum of 24 to 48 hours. Um, use in concrete and mortar in cold weather applications. Mason mix. It says two to eight fluid ounces. Good enough. That's wild, man. That's cool. Merca.
so almost done gonna finish this up today but i'm gonna put the video out for you guys so you don't have to wait more days to to see what's going on here it's been a while um that's kind of my new year's resolution by the way i'm gonna get more videos out to you guys gonna work harder getting the video content putting them together and um yeah i'll try my best okay so next episode uh i will show completing this i'll have the ninth course done and then i'm going to fill the cores hopefully do some dry lock on the outside to prevent moisture from getting in through the soil um, i don't know if i could do that though because it needs about 50 degrees to properly adhere to the block so i bought it it's just a matter of getting the right day to do that so i do have you know a little bit of block left but this has set me up nicely to really tackle the foundation of the house house is right over there we're going to do the same type of footers and we're going to do five courses of block and um, i figure this gave me a lot of practice to know what I'm doing when I get into that and uh, I can do an exceptional job when the time comes. But anyway, happy new year to you guys. It's gonna be a good one for me, I'm excited. And um, we'll see you on the next one, which will hopefully be very soon. Take care guys. Better get these little treats that Maddie found in the woods out of my way. Bird poop on this thing? Jerk. <laughs>